In every human cell, two meters of DNA is packed into a 10 micron nucleus. So if we stretch out the DNA from one cell, it is taller than I am. But we're going to actually scrunch all that up into a tiny space uh, in each of your cells. And therefore, uh, most of your DNA is compacted, not accessible. Only the active elements, those are the switches that decide when and where genes turn on, they're accessible and read by the machinery. So simply finding out where the, these accessible elements are can tell us a lot about why cells turn on and off different genes. This technology, ATAC-Seq, stands for Assay of Transposase Accessible Chromatin. The ATAC-Seq method was developed here at Stanford in 2013. This was truly foundational because it allowed us to profile the chromatin accessibility in as few as a couple hundred cells. Um, this was really important because it allowed us to begin understanding the complex regulatory dynamics of primary cells from various disease contexts, where a sample can be very limited. It uses an enzyme that copies and pastes DNA. And what we learn is that when this enzyme reacts with chromatin, which is the DNA protein complex where genes live, essentially you're spray painting this DNA and asking which bits can be accessed by this spray paint enzyme. Only the accessible parts can get spray painted, and therefore in a single step, we can identify the active gene switches in disease samples, such as in cancer. Cancer is the disease of genes. So over the last few decades, we know there are many changes to the genes that change their function. But another equally important aspect of cancer is the wrong genes are turned on in the wrong places. So these switches that determine gene activity was our missing component, and we can now find how these switches are changed in cancer, including mutations that make the switch get stuck on the on position. And over the years, we have developed the ATAC-Seq method such that it would work in primary frozen tissue, such as the ones we did here from the Cancer Genome Atlas. These samples from the Cancer Genome Atlas are some of the most well-studied cancer samples in all the world having matched whole exome sequencing, RNA sequencing, DNA methylation profiling, DNA copy number amplification, and with a subset having whole genome sequencing. In this work, we've generated uh, ATAC-Seq profiles for 410 tumor samples representing 23 different cancer types from the Cancer Genome Atlas. And to date, this represents the largest and most diverse uh, collection of chromatin accessibility profiles in primary human cancer. But what makes this a really special collection of data is actually the ability to combine uh, the ATAC-Seq data with publicly available data types from the Cancer Genome Atlas. So when we uh, combine our ATAC-Seq data with RNA sequencing and gene expression profiling, we are able to predict uh, interactions between distal regulatory elements and uh, gene promoters. And this uh, allows us to understand how different cancer-relevant genes are being regulated and give some insights into cancer therapy and, and things like cancer immunotherapy, which are very hot topics in cancer these days. But the thing that we're probably most excited about coming out of this research is the interaction between whole genome sequencing data and ATAC-Seq data and the ability to identify non-coding changes um, that uh, are cancer relevant. So what we've done is identified single base changes where uh, chromatin accessibility increases dramatically and there's changes in nearby gene expression. And we find that these single base changes create de novo transcription factor binding sites um, and lead to an increase in accessibility specifically on the mutated allele. What makes these very interesting is that they're not happening in random places of the genome. Um, they're happening near genes that we know are relevant to cancer and to patient survival. So I think one of the powers of uh, the data set is the synergy that comes with the immense other data that are already part of the Cancer Genome Atlas. There's a lot of analysis that can uh, go across different molecular uh, data types and be integrated into sort of a, a more functional understanding of what cancer uh, is. In a lot of ways, the analysis that we did was, in some sense, the tip of the iceberg. There's lots of things we, we want to continue to do with the community, um, uh, trying to understand regulatory dynamics uh, across different cancer types, how uh, copy number variation couples into chromatin uh, variation, for example. But one of the big things that uh, eventually I think uh, everyone in the, the community wants to see is these molecular phenotyping uh, methods like uh, ATAC-Seq uh, partitioning patient populations and um, telling us something about how we can treat and ideally cure uh, people with cancer.